One quick thing though, um, for the sake of time, we're going to long service today. Today we're going to be going to Sermon Net. Turn to your neighbor and say, Sermon Net. I love the way it goes. Say it one time, Sermon Net. Which is basically just a shortened version of a full sermon. And another time I'm going to expound on this passage a lot more, but you know, it's not about how long the sermon is, it's about the meat inside of it, it's about the Holy Spirit's anointing to speak to all of us as a preacher. Amen? Amen. 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 So, you haven't seen me up here in a while. Pastor's been very uh, uh, graceful, hasn't asked me to preach or expected me to because in this season that I'm in right now, it's pulled a lot of directions. Um, family life, work and ministry, and then that school thing. And, and so it, it's, I'm being torn a lot of different directions, so I, I don't really have time pretty much with my wife, bless her heart, uh, sacrificing with, with me. And I pretty, we don't have any much time to be ministered to ourselves that much, right? Um, I say that because, you know, to, to put together a sermon takes a lot of time and dedication. And, and so it, I would be remiss to, if I didn't put it to lot of amount of time to pray and meditation before you sermon. That's what those we're talking about. Any fact, what was that? All the part. So I can't just be looking at me today and I'm just going to come to a sermon. It's the development. So even though I've been up here ministering to the Word, and even though I haven't had that much time to prepare for a sermon, I've always got my time and dedication. That doesn't get, that, that, that never change. I always have spent time with God every day. Prayer, meditation, reading the Word. And while I'm doing that, lo and behold, God gives me a sermon every time I do it. So I got like 500 sermons in my head. <laughs> and then even though that's not, that, wasn't, that wasn't my purpose, I wasn't going to go over the sermon, but God gave me a calling. And it's a gift and it's a blessing. And every time I start reading this word and praying on it, he's like, start speaking to me. Yeah, right? This guy, do this. Pre he preaches to me first before I give it to you. Amen? But that's because God has put a specific calling on my life to preach the gospel, um, bring the word, and share with people. But, you know, it brings me blissful joy. Now, that's me. What about you? I took some bumps along the road, but when God called me, I answered, here I am. Amen. Amen. I took some bumps on the road, but when I finally listened, Heard it. I answered, Lord, here I am. Not everyone was called to be a preacher or a pastor, but every single being born into the humanity has a specific calling, purpose, and gifting for the education of the body of Christ. Do you know yours? Have you listened to his call? How have you, or how will you, answer when God calls you? Today we're coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. And God's word says. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision at the time. Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for he called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and laid it down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for he called me. But he said, I did not call my son to lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of God had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel, and which the two ears of everyone who hears, it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I spoke concerning his house from the beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, <clears throat> because his sons were blaspheming God and did not restrain him. 
Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned by or by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay into the morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told. So Samuel told him everything, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel from Dan to Bersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Silo, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word? <laughs> now, I just want to give a little bit of background real quick. Um, like I said, you know, for time's sake, we have enough to get into full uh, uh, exegetical um, process. But so Eli is a man of God. He's a priest, and he, he's, he's he's left. He's focused. He's doing a lot of work for the Lord, but he's kind of let his family go by the wayside. So his son's acting up, for the name of terms. Samuel is coming up under Eli. He's not his blood son, but he's coming up under. And Samuel, Eli's a man of God, Samuel is serving him and, 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 and ministering to him by taking care of him. Amen? Yes, Alright, we'll get into all that another sermon, the rest of that, expound on that later. So, now that we, we read God's word, we see that Samuel, at the instant God called him, what did he say? Here I am. He didn't wait, he just said, Here I am, Lord. And the reason why he was able to do that is because he had his heart and mind in position to receive from the Lord. Now, how did Samuel do this? Samuel did this because he was already ministering to God by being served. Now, he didn't know the word of God. That, uh, he didn't know God. He didn't know the word of God had not come to him. But he was serving a man of God, and he had a humble heart that was centered around being in a, in a, in a, in a tranquil place, being in a place... To, to, to be able to be ministered to. Yes. He ministered, and therefore he was in the place to be ministered to. Amen? Amen? So when the time came for God to call him, his mind was not clouded with distractions, and his heart was ready to receive. Amen? Amen? Let's move on. So, first, Samuel and all of us should have our hearts in the mind and position to receive from the Lord. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Once again, now the voice then was ministered to Eli in the presence of the Lord, excuse me, ministered to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, there was no free provision. He did not know God. So what that tells me is that someone who doesn't know God can still hear from God. Because I didn't know God. We were, a lot of us were now, we met the mind, we didn't know God, but we can still hear from God. We're moving along now, we're going to get to that in closing. Respond promptly and accept. After you have yourself positioned, your heart, mind, and position to receive from the Lord, you gotta have, you gotta respond promptly and accept. And, and as you see, for the very, the very first time Samuel heard from God, he responded immediately with, Here I am. Remember that he had not yet known God or his word, and this is all new to him. But notice every time Eli told him that he didn't call him, Samuel never thought. Uh, that he thought of himself as being crazy or delusional. And, and most importantly, he didn't uh, harden his heart against Eli, thinking that he was toying with him. He continued to make himself ready to receive and respond promptly. So when he was informed that the Lord was calling him, his response was consistent. So he didn't get caught up in his feelings because uh, 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 you know, he knew he was hearing something. He didn't know exactly where it was, but it did not take what was course of ministering to somebody. Amen? Amen? Look what the Word of God says. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, Lord Hebrews. And the Lord came and stood calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. I want to take a moment uh, to explain why responding promptly and accepting is so important. 
For one, you're calling them to changes. God may add on to that call. But the calling that God has upon each of our, our individual callings that everyone has as unique to their self, themselves, that God gives he or she, is for them. And if it's a true calling from God, that's not going to change. You know, he has a plan for all of us. And, and, and you know, but the plans he has for us, he's foreknown long before we may came into existence. With that being said, if we are engaging and living a life contrary to what God desires for us, we're doing nothing but we're going to do nothing but struggle. Whether it's spiritually, whether it's emotionally, physically, financially, mentally, you get what I'm saying? Peace will elude your life when we are not walking in the ordained steps placed before us. I know because I have avoided God's call for some years. Uh, and got nothing for it. Pain, anguish, confusion, and lost time. Somebody here has to know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Why put yourself through unnecessary calamity and turmoil? And get this there is no guarantee you're going to live on the other side of that. I know many of that who've, who've, who've prolonged and avoided their calling, and the Lord has called them uh, in a different manner. And then you make it to, to answer their call. And I don't, want to, I don't want to sit before the Lord one day and say, and have an answer. And he asked me, why didn't you accept your call? I don't want to do that. Amen? Amen. Now, simply answering your calling is not enough. Whether it be that God calls you to serve as a minister in the kingdom, as a carpenter, administrator, teacher, custodian, preacher, prophet, evangelist, pastor, Physician, deacon, lawyer, you get what I'm saying? Whatever it is, it's your call. But simply answering the call is not enough. You can't just be idle in your call. You can't say, Lord, answer my call. When, you know, it's, whatever he's called you to do to be, to, to be an asset to the kingdom, we must master it. Yes. I want to say it again. Whatever God has called upon us to perform and fulfill to be an asset for the kingdom of God. We must master through prayer, dedication, time, determination, and confidence with authority. Yeah. Like, amen. Yeah. So what does that mean we have to do? To grow in the call. Live out the process. As the word of God says, as Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his word fall to the ground. And all Israel from there to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Samuel. And for, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen. The word says Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. Now speaking of growth, this relates to the voice physically and as well spiritually growing within the call that God had placed on his life. We should all follow this example and, and, and fully trust the plans that the Lord has for us and be intentional about staying the course to where God is leading us. We can only see but so far. But God knows exactly what's in store for the future. We just have to be obedient. Samuel was. And with his obedience, with the obedience that came from answering God's call, he became a prophet, he became a priest, and a judge over all of Israel. Amen? Amen? Once again, he had no idea where God was taking him until he answered that call. And even when he got called to be a prophet, he didn't know he was going to be a priest yet, he didn't know he was going to be a judge. I, I'm assuming but he followed, he was just obedient to the calling that God had in his life. And as I said, God will never change your calling, but he will add to it. As he had unto Samuel. And I'm going to close with this. Amen. Just like there are seasons of climate and weather, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. Four seasons, right? You got seasons of produce. 
planting, fertilization, blooming, and harvest. There are seasons and levels of spiritual growth. I'm going to say that again. There are seasons and levels to spiritual growth. First, there's a season of weakness. Recognize that we are absolutely nothing without Jesus. We're basically walking zombies. But we're in a season of weakness where we reach our, our, our proverbial rock bottom. Whether it's, it doesn't just mean being in bondage to addiction, it means whatever course of life has you, that you reach a wall and you realize, you finally realize you are not in control of your life, but you need a savior. You need someone to redirect, you need someone to give you strength. You gotta get that first point, that season of weakness. Then there's a season of humility. Coming to the altar, coming to the foot of the throne, surrendering all to Jesus, humbling ourselves, and surrendering all to Jesus in that season of being humble. Then there's a season of discipleship and growth. Having tools instilled and skills developed and gifts discovered. Amen? Once again, discipleship and growth. Having tools instilled, skills developed, and gifts discovered. And lastly, there's a season of sustained power and authority in Jesus. Can I get an amen? There has to come a time when we live out the promises of God. And our authority as heirs of the throne. In Christ, we have power over spiritual wickedness and the propagandas of society. Society tells us that we're always in bondage, that we're always in an addict, that we're always suffering from depression, anxiety, and confusion. But our God says that if anyone be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The word of God says that we are more than conquerors. That life and death is in the power of the tongue. And that we are God's righteousness. We can't stay in a weak state. That is not spiritual growth. Mind you, if you get weak at times, amen, we got flesh and human. But the, the, the thing about it is no person in God should be stagnated in that state for a whole long time. Amen. There should be spiritual growth. Yes. Amen? Amen? And that spiritual growth accumulates with our power and authority sustaining that in Jesus. Amen? Amen. There is no weakness when we are covered and abiding in Jesus. Again, there is no weakness when we are covered and abiding in Jesus. He gives us supernatural power to excel and succeed. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, thank you all for allowing me to share today. Uh, I want to add on to this. I would be remiss if I, I didn't give an example of someone answering and call and how it affects other people. So, there's this old country man in the country of Pennsylvania. His name is David Wilkerson. Out in Sticks somewhere. Watch the TV and blow his speech. He says, turn the TV off and go to New York. He says, all right. Goes his wife, David, got turn the TV off and go to New York. She's like, okay. Goes to New York, starts ministering to teenagers in the, in the judicial system. Long story short, it opens a place called Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge is, 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 is started in New York, brought here in Pennsylvania. There's another man named Alonzo Smalls, a dope fiend on the rooftops of Harlem. Someone from Soul Saving Station brings him to church, he gets saved there, and he ends up going to Teen Challenge. He goes to Teen Challenge and he starts a ministry in 1970 called Pivot Ministries. Mm -hmm. As the founder of our ministry, Alonzo Smalls, from one of those smalls you get, after the joiners, Brother Kevin, after going for the little old man, and thousands of other men who have been made whole, all because men continue to answer the call of the 